You can find me on Instagram and on YouTube as Knits for the Soul. I have a podcast about knitting mainly, but also about the books I read and my life in general. I'm a single mom and I live in Germany with my 10 year old son. In this video, I would like to talk about why knitting and also podcasting about knitting is basically healing my soul, also helping me with my mental health. I am struggling with being a mom in general, I guess. Um, it started with postnatal depression when, yeah, after I gave birth to my son. And I also have issues about my body image. So this is what this video is about. When I was still pregnant with my son, my partner had a very bad motorcycle accident and he had to go through several surgeries and the recovery period basically covered the last third of my pregnancy and also the first few weeks um, after the birth of our son. Um, I think, or what the doctors think is, um, that this very stressful period also affected my child in his later behavior. So when he was a few weeks old, he started to be very fussy and crying and it was basically non-stop. And this also, well, <laughs> stressed me, of course. Um, so there are a lot of babies um, in German, we call them Schrei babies, so crying babies. Uh, usually they have issues with colleagues because they uh, yeah, need to learn that when they eat, <laughs> they digest and it's something inside them. Um, yeah, is doing its work. So this is weird for babies and yeah, anyway. So this is what the clinic we went to uh, also told me. But um, the worst part was that um, due to the fact that we also were renovating our house, we drove back and forth from where we lived to the, to the place where we uh, renovated the house um, several days a week. And this was also very stressful for the baby and uh, he was crying all the time and didn't sleep so i didn't sleep and the doctors recommended that i take my boy and myself out of that situation completely and it was like a miracle so uh, my son and i he was i think about four or five weeks old at that point we moved to my parents' house, which is right next to the house we were renovating. And I stayed with my parents from that point on. And literally after three, four days maybe, my baby was the happiest, calmest, <laughs> easiest baby ever. <laughs> so from that point on, there were no issues at all. So we slept through the night um, almost immediately. So I, I guess only once did he need to be nursed. So I got back my sleep. The baby had enough sleep. And that security net I had with my parents because they were at home um, was was the haven I needed to calm down. And when I calmed down and I wasn't stressed anymore and um, not worrying about anything actually, so the baby was totally fine. And then there was, there was a period where everything was okay. Um, and maybe Two months later, um, 
I felt into depression, um, a postnatal depression, and I went to a therapist that didn't work out. So she didn't treat me like she, yeah, like she took me seriously and I didn't go there anymore. Then I found a, um, how do you call that in English? A self-help group, yeah, um, at my local uh, Protestant church. So I went there and there were a lot of different people in that group with a lot of different things they had to work through. And it helped me so much. It helped me a lot. This went on for a couple of months. And at the same time, I used Ravelry to find people in my area because I moved here and I didn't actually know anyone anymore. And I used Ravelry to look for other knitters who would like to meet up for stitching bitches. So I wouldn't be um, yeah, like imprisoned in this tiny village and just looking after the baby and oh yeah, I, I didn't have anything else to do. Which is also against my personality because I was always working on something or uh, doing things and that was just gone because I was a mother. <laughs> and um, yeah, well, I just shared a bit of uh, housework with my parents, but there was basically nothing else to do. And I was focused so solely on taking care of my baby that nothing else existed. And this also increased that depression inside me. Um, yeah, so I found people and uh, we started to meet up on a weekly basis in cafes, etc. And I usually had my boy with me, of course. And that was the first step uh, to, let's say, a uh, yeah, normal life for me again. And <laughs> that was a and I still have that knitting group, and we are still meeting every week. Um, during Corona or COVID, we we met digitally, but now we're starting to meet personally again. And we went through so many things over the past ten years, and I really don't know what would happen to me or how it would be like today without these friends. And I'm really grateful to have them. So knitting basically brought us all together and it is such a major part in my life that I also don't know how I would be able to live without it. It gives me so much joy, but also, on the other hand, keeps me from drowning in problems I'm not able to control at one point, have to wait for solutions that are controlled from the outside, so to say. And it is a way to have a haven as well from all these things surrounding me and making my life difficult. <laughs> and because knitting is easy, it's just knit stitches and purl stitches and they're just, they're just uh, coming together and making a beautiful garment and you create something beautiful with your own two hands and this is an accomplishment that is such a big help in focusing on something positive and not being distracted by things, as I said, you, you might not be able to control.
at one time in your life. Knitting became such an important part in my life that one of the other uh, women in that knitting group and I decided we will open a yarn shop with a cafe attached. So we planned this and it also really helped me to get out of that depression for good um, because I had another purpose, something out of being a mother. Um, I could be myself again because I had a business before the pregnancy as well and being kind of an entrepreneur is something I am. I want to create things, I want to build things and work and make them prosper and successful. So this, this is what I really like to do. And so we started this shop. It took about 10 months to plan and then we opened it. And it was one of the best things in my life. The experience during the years we had this yarn shop was so amazing. The people I met, the knowledge I gained, all the business uh, parts of things, that was so great. I loved that. And uh, when I had to close the shop, it was like giving up like part of myself. But uh, on the other hand, the rational part of myself knew it was not economical anymore and I, I couldn't go on with it the way it was. So several things came together there and I lost my creativity in that period because on the one hand, I lost my parents shortly, both shortly after each other I inherited a lot of debt, which um, was which, which was the main reason I had to close my shop because uh, I couldn't afford the mortgages and the shop, and well, have enough to live off. And then, of course. I still had my son who also struggled with the loss of his grandparents and I didn't have time to mourn them really because I had to work through all the financial things also with another, how to call it, a family drama um, where I had to uh, go to court and this was all stretching over months and months in my life and I really lost I really lost my connection to knitting and I really felt that I wasn't myself anymore if you know what I mean something something was missing so then I made that cut and started uh, to work as a normal employee and I just um, disconnected work life and personal life again because I wasn't working my hobby anymore but um, had a job and then the private life where I could pursue my uh, creative, my cra the crafts I liked. Then it happened that um, my partner and I separated and um, all of a sudden I was a single mom and my son is still struggling with that a lot and we started therapy almost four years ago now and we are still not done and this is accompanying us it seems like forever and at the beginning of this year I made a decision I need an outlet I need something good and creative and positive for myself to have something else in my life 
and that is why I started my knitting podcast. Um, I was so inspired by all the knitting podcaster that podcasters that popped up during the pandemic and they really helped me getting my mojo back and really having fun, real fun again when taking up the needles and knitting something new. So I decided I will try that and start a podcast again. I had an audio podcast um, when I still had my shop, um, but now I decided I wanted a YouTube podcast because just of the visual, visual um, part of it. And it is so much fun. Um, not just talking about the things I love and sharing sharing the projects, the yarns, um, the experiences, books. It is, and especially is again, um, connecting and communicating with the people out there. So what helped me 10 years ago when I found my knitting group is now again helping me um, meeting people, even if it's digitally, um, who share the same love towards knitting, crocheting, weaving, sewing, reading, etc., etc. Um, that I feel so much better and happier in a way. And that is why I uh, really, really like this community and that knitting especially is something like yeah is bringing us together and this is making me really happy thank you for watching and if you have any questions or would like to talk about um, your experiences then j just feel free to contact me Thank you again and thanks to Thomas for having me. Bye.